We're on the campus of Linfield College in McMinnville. More than 90% of the students here receive some sort of financial aid, and Linfield students have one of the highest graduation rates in Oregon. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Ken Ackerman. We are in the Gerald R. Nicholson Library here on the campus of Linfield. Well, it's not just about the parents, the attorneys, the judge in court. Now, a child has a voice. Please welcome from Casa Yamhill County Executive Director Amy Bissonette, Program Director. Amy, thank yeah. you very much for being with us. Absolutely. Um, Casa, Court Appointed Special Ad Advocates. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Casas are, they're volunteers. They're everyday citizens who are appointed by a judge to advocate for kids who've been abused and neglected. Most of the time that means kids who are removed from their homes and placed in foster care but that can also be kids who are still at home, but the court, the state has taken legal custody of those children for so it, their protection. Is it just children from low income families that are eligible? No, it's any child who has been a victim of abuse or neglect and the state has intervened on their behalf. And when we talk about uh, the number of children, is it staggering? I think for Yamhill County, it, it's pretty high. We have about 250 kids on our caseload at any given time in this community. And how long does it take from start to finish usually? I know it, it can vary. Our average case lasts a little over two years. And CASA advocates are volunteers, aren't they? They are. They're incredible. They're, they're giving, on average, 10 to 15 hours a month of their time. But depending on the severity of the case and the number of kids in a family, they could be giving a lot more than that. And what type of background do you look for in an advocate? We basically want just Anybody who is a good communicator, um, they have to be at least 21 years old and they have to pass a criminal and child welfare background check. But the communication skills and a strong sense of right and wrong and, and wanting to do what's right for kids is the best, those are the best skills for wanting, being a CASA. Wanting to do what's right for kids, what do advocates do? They do a lot of things and, and any case could be different for the volunteer and for the kids. Um, the, the basic, sort of the backbone for the volunteers, they're meeting with the kids regularly. They have to know them well enough to be able to represent their interests in court. They're meeting with the social worker, the child's attorney if they have one, uh, teachers, counselors, parents, other relatives. They're, they're doing a broad investigation of the case and then they formulate a report with recommendations that they turn in to the court and help the court make those very important decisions for kids. And are there kids on a waiting list? There are. In fact, I just checked the waiting list this morning. We have 33 kids in the county that we consider very high priority who do not have a CASA volunteer right now. We have quite a few more who don't have a CASA, but they're, a little, they're in a little bit more stable mm -hmm. situation than those 33 kids who really could use our help. I mentioned earlier that a child now has a voice in court. The children themselves, are they ever in the courtroom environment? They are sometimes. Um, there was a law passed in 2008 that tells the judges they're supposed to consult with children in an age-appropriate manner at their permanency hearing. And that's typically about a year after the child has been removed from their family. And there's, the kids are supposed to be in court. Now, that's not appropriate for all of mm -hmm. our kids. So the CASA can go in their place and can speak on their behalf. But the CASA is also speaking up for their best interest at any other hearing, not just the permanency hearing. Now, what are the ranges of kids you find that are coming in? Abuse, neglect? Is that mostly it? Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's abuse and neglect, and a lot of our cases, greater than 80% of our cases are parental substance abuse. And so that results in a good deal of neglect and sometimes physical abuse. All right, I want to mention that you have a golf tournament. It's, it's not around the corner, right. but uh, you should let people know about it. Yeah, we do. Um, we get only 18% of our funding from the state office and that comes from the general fund so we have to do quite a bit of fundraisers mm -hmm. and uh, applying for grants so one of our big one of the biggest ones mm -hmm. is the golf tournament and that's in june we have it every june and we have been having it out at the uh, bayou golf course okay and so we just love for people to come out to that and help support right. the program we'll give them the information as well amy bissonette thank you very much for joining us thank you make it a great day